Hello there, programmers, and welcome to another episode in our Pi Game tutorial series. We're going to make this one pretty short compared to the other videos that we've done where we build an entire game. This one's going to be focused on a particular skill, uh, specifically being able to load a tile sheet uh, into your game and being able to access any of the tiles inside of that sheet uh, as you need to as, as you need them. So. Um, we're going to dive straight into this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set up a, a project here. I'll, I'll set up, I'll install Polygame um, inside of my virtual environment. And then uh, I'm going to create two folders in here uh, inside of my project. The first one is going to be an assets folder. Uh, this is where I'm going to store my tile sheet. And the second folder uh, is going to be a... Uh, a directory or a, a package for the actual game itself. So um, if you followed along in my tutorials before, you know that I like to split things up into classes just to make it a little bit easier to follow. Um, so let's go ahead and create our entry point. So main.py. Once we do that, we can come in here and um, we're going to set up our main game loop inside of this. Uh, we're also going to, inside of the game directory, we're going to create a dunder init. And that will instantiate this package for us, okay? Um, and so uh, I'll just create in here, uh, import pygame at the top, and then create my empty class. And we're just going to call this game. And then I'm going to create a couple of methods here. Uh, so we'll create our dunder init. We'll do a pass on it. We'll do a um, handle events and pass on it. And then an update function, as you can guess, we're passing on it. And finally, a draw function. We're not going to fill all of this out as uh, in this tutorial, but this is the way I like to set up everything. That way, inside of my main function, I can now say from game import game. And then I can do my main function here. So if dunder name equals dunder main, oops, dunder main. And then we'll set up our game object. And while true, we'll run our game loop. So we're going to handle event. We're going to do game.handle events, game.update, and game.draw. Okay. As I said, we're not going to use all of these in this tutorial, but uh, this is how I like to set up my projects. So we'll we'll just continue to follow that pattern. <clears throat> okay, so inside of our game class itself, um, this is where we're going to um, set up everything that we need for the core game. So we need Pygame. Um, I'll go ahead and also import sys so that I can get a nice exit function uh, and be able to cleanly exit everything. Inside of our init function, uh, we're going to call pygame.init, and then we're going to set up our screen. So our display is going to be pygame.display.setMode. Um, if you followed along in any of my other tutorials, you know I like to move these off into a constants file, but uh, because we're just doing a quick and simple tutorial, what we're going to do is uh, hard code these numbers in here. So I'll set my window to 1280 by 640. Uh, just to make it nice and big and easy to see all the sprites loaded in at the same time. Okay, and then we'll do a self.clock, uh, and we're going to set this to pygame.time.clock. Okay, Oop. so there we go. So we've we've now set up uh, the core basic stuff, and then we'll do a background color here. So self.bgColor equals pygame.color. And we'll set this to black. So we'll just have a black screen on the back. All right. Um, outside of that, we need a, to handle the exit event. So inside of our event loop, we'll say for event in pygame.event.get. If event.type is equal to pygame.quit, then we are going to call pygame.quit and pygame. Or, sorry, not pygame, sys.exit. There we go. So, um, we have all the basics set up now. We can display a window. Uh, we're gonna, we can paint it black. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're going to actually draw inside of our draw function. We'll say self.screen.fill 
and then self.bg color. So now we're drawing a black screen. So there we go. If we run this now, you can see um, how everything is working. So inside our main file, we'll do run main. We'll just pop up a big window here. There we go. A big black window. That's it. That's all we have so far. Okay. So now let's actually um, bring in some sp um, assets that we can do this. I already have a tile sheet that I'm going to be using. Uh, you can go find your own for free anywhere on the internet. Um, the only thing you need to know from that sprite sheet is how big your actual sprites are on there so that you can pass that size in uh, and, and appropriately chop this up. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here. Uh, I grabbed this off of Kenny.nl. Uh, there is a uh, he has a ton of sprite sheets and free available 2D assets that you can use. I'm just using his simple platformer and I'm using the tile sheet from it. There's also a, a character sheet with different sizes of sprites and and a bunch of other stuff, but this will just give us a basic example of how to do everything. So you can see these are just packed in here as tightly as they can be. There's a whole lot of sprites, a whole lot of things that we can access, okay? So, uh, let's close the PNG here and get to actually building this. Uh, to do this, what I'm going to do is inside my game folder, I'm going to create a new Python file, and I'm going to call this uh, tile sheet, okay? Um, or we can call it tile set or whatever you want to call it, but I'll call it tile sheet. Um, so this is going to be my tile sheet class. This is the way that I'm going to actually load the sheet in and be able to grab individual sprites out of the sheet as I need them. Okay. So inside of here, all I need is Pygame, and then I need to define my tile sheet class. Okay. So we'll define that and do our dunder init, and then... Let's pass for now because inside of here, I'm going to create uh, a bunch of arguments to get passed in here. Um, so what arguments can I pass in? Well, first I need to know the file name. What file am I actually loading? And then I need the width and the height of, uh, the, of the style sheet so that I know um, where in the style sheet I'm, I'm actually grabbing each of these tiles. Um, and this is the width and height of the individual cells, so they can be different. You can have 64 pixels wide by 128 pixels tall, whatever it needs to be. Um, you can have your width and height of all of your sprites set individually here. Uh, and then I need to know how many rows and how many columns are inside of here. So this is stuff I just know from setting up my, my sprite sheet, how many I have, okay? So inside of this initialization, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load in my image. So we're going to say pygame.image.load, uh, and we're going to pass in the file name that we pass in as an argument, and then I'm going to call uh, convert. Oh, convert, C-O-N. All right, there we go. So we call convert on this. This will, t this will take the style sheet and, and optimize it for use inside of Pygame. Then we can set up what is called a tile table. Um, what this is, is this is a, a two-dimensional array that's going to contain each row and column of our sprite sheet split up into individual resources that we can now individually address. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to extract. So let's say for tile X, as we move, as we move through, we're going to say each tile's X position in range from zero to number of columns, okay? Uh, we could calculate all of this in here. I just find it easier to pass in, um, since I know ahead of time how big my, my tile sheets are, I find it easier to just pass in the number of columns and the number of rows that I'm dealing with so I don't have to dynamically calculate it. But you can easily do that if you want to. So each line is gonna be a new array. So this is our two-dimensional array. We'll basically attach this uh, inside of our tile table, we will append our line. Okay, so we're going to create a, each entry in the tile table will be a line array, and the line is going to be everything in that row. So now for each tile y position in the range of zero to rows. Okay, and now we'll say. We're going to grab the rectangle, and what this is going to be is tile, tiles x position times the width 
tiles y position times the height and then we'll set this to the actual width and height of the tile okay so we're creating a rectangle we're going to start at the top left and we're going to give it a width and a height so that it uh, sets the rectangle to the size of the actual tile then what we do is we say line dot append so on the line array we're going to append image dot subsurface of the rect we just defined okay so we're we take that rectangle we define it then we grab a subsurface of the image we've loaded in and that's it that now we've extracted all of the tiles out of our uh, our single tile sheet image okay uh, so let's see what this looks like. Let's set up a draw method here, um, just so that we can um, verify that everything is working as we expect it to. Okay. Um, now, I already know the size of my tile sheet, so I'm going to use some hard-coded numbers here. If you use different sizes of tiles, you can use whatever you need to. Um, but And I'm going to pass in the screen here so that I can just draw directly to it from inside of this class. Uh, this is not the way I would normally do this. I'll show you how, how I would go about accessing each of these tiles in just a moment. But for now, we just want to make sure that everything is working as we expect it to. So um, enumerate self.tile table. There we go. Oh, did I spell this right? E, doom, or rate. There we go. All right, spelled it correctly there. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing each um, each row out of that tile table. So each row is is a separate array. And then I need to grab each tile outside of each line, each, each of those rows. So we're going to enumerate that row that we just grabbed. And then I'm going to call screen.blit on that tile. And then I'm going to give it the position. So the X and Y position are where it matches in there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a padding of 72 pixels just so that things get spaced out a little bit. And we can easily see each individual tile. So it won't be packed together like it was in the tile sheet. You won't be confused that we're just drawing the tile sheet directly to the screen anymore. We'll actually be um, looking at uh, each individual tile drawn on the screen okay so inside of our our game class here what we're going to do is we're going to come down to this draw uh well so first we'll set up our tiles um so here at the bottom of our initialization we'll say self dot tiles is equal to a oh i need to import it too um that helps from tile sheet import tile sheet and then, uh, so down here we'll say tile, oops, capital T, tile sheet. And we'll pass in the file name. So in this case, we have assets slash platform, capital P, platform pack underscore tile sheet dot PNG. So that's the, that's the tile sheet that I copied up here. Um, and then uh, inside of this tile sheet, my each of my tiles is a 64 by 64 tile. There are uh, seven rows and 14 columns. Okay, so I'm passing everything in there. I, I already know what it all what all those numbers are, so I'm just going to pass those in and use them. Okay. Um, here, let's go ahead and say self.tiles.draw and pass in the screen so that we can draw that. And then as a last thing, because we're using blit directly uh, to actually show this to the screen we have to call uh, self.display.flip uh, so that we can flip the buffer into view and see what it looks like so let's run this let's see what happens here we should see mm, did i spell this right tile from tile sheet what did i do wrong here No module named. Typo in the word tile sheet. I did something wrong here, didn't I? Hold on. Oh, I'm silly. <laughs> 
Because it's not just tile sheet. I have to call it game tile sheet. There we go. Haha. <laughs> that fixes it all. Okay. Uh, silly mistakes. Gotta love them. Okay. Here we go. Look at this. Everything worked. Okay. Uh, so if you put this inside of a package, you need to include the package name at the start of your module name. So from game tile sheet import tile sheet. There we go. And now you can see, hey, look at this. We've got all of these tiles drawn out onto the window. Uh, and they're spread out. There's a little bit of a gap in between each of them so that we can easily see that we are not actually loading this file directly in here. We're loading each individual tile. To further solidify this, let's go ahead and close this. And inside of our tile sheet class, I'm going to create a second method in here. Uh, this method is going to be what we would actually use uh, inside of our sprite classes to load in each of the images that we need. We could grab the tile and we want to know what the X and Y position of the specific tile is that we want to grab. And then all we have to do here is return self.tile table and uh, access the X and Y position inside of this. So we know it's a two-dimensional array, so we pass an X and Y inside the array. That'll grab us that tile in there. So to draw this to the screen, let's go ahead and comment out the entire sprite sheet here. And then as another move, we'll do self.screen.blit, and we'll pass in self.tiles.get tile and um let's grab a random tile let's say six three okay we're going to grab the tile at position six three and see what that one is and we'll draw it on the screen at um i don't know random 72 72 how about that okay so if we hit play now you can see we grabbed the tile at six three and it's this outline of a diamond shape so there we go we have a single tile being drawn to the screen now we can use that accessor function to um, set up our sprite classes and inside of each sprite class, the image that we want to load, we would just call tile sheet, the, we would call the tile sheet and say, give me this particular image out of the tile sheet and set it as my image. So there we go. Um, that's everything you need to know about loading tile sheets. I will start using this in future tutorials as we move and we start building more and more complicated games. So I hope you enjoyed this. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this and hit that like button so that we can feed the YouTube algorithm and show them how much uh, or how awesome these tutorials are. Um, <laughs> as long as I don't continue making silly mistakes. All right. I, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next tutorial series. Thank you so much.